I was working with a lot of organizations on how to design experiments. What kind of innovation experiments made the most sense for them? And this was interesting, it was generating good work, but I felt, and they felt, that there was a bit of a disconnect here, that we were doing interesting experiments, but it was a means and ends sort of thing. That what was really the goal of all of these experiments? And the organizing principle was, well, we want to become more innovative and create new value. And then the issue really arose, what kind of new value were we really seeking to create? And I thought about it, and I realized that a new or different, dare I say innovative, organizing principle had emerged. And that is, we were trying to transform customers. We weren't just trying to transform our products and our services, we were trying to transform the customers. So what kind of customers did we want the innovations to create? What happens when you treat innovation as an investment in the competence and capability of your customer? That was the real origin of the book. The notion of what does it mean not to optimize innovation, but to, to, to transform who customers are to the innovations that you offer. Well, to me, you know, when one looks at the history of this, you know, whenever you come up with something, you think, wow, it's an interesting idea, but historically, what, what are the precedents? Where does this map? And you think about it. Everybody talks about, for example, Henry Ford, you know, created mass production, mass production of the automobile, transformed the automobile industry. But wait a second. Henry Ford didn't just mass produce automobiles. He mass produced drivers and driving. Henry Ford transformed the human capital stock of the United States and the world by having his innovation transform driving. Think about Google. Everybody talks about Google as a search company, but you look at the Google algorithm, you look at PageRank, Google doesn't just create search, it creates searchers. Google turns all of its users into searchers. Google has leveraged Web 2.0 technologies to transform the human capital stock of the world and has transformed literally hundreds of millions of people into searchers whose searches add value to Google's capabilities. That's pretty bloody profound. Henry Ford and you know, Brin and, 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 and Page, they, their innovations transformed their customers. I have a very seri simple series of questions I, I, I ask customers. My, excuse me, I ask clients. What kind of innovator are you? What's your innovation brand right now? What kind of innovator do you want to become? What kind of innovator do your customers want you to become? What kind of innovator will your customers pay you to become? What kind of innovator will your customers pay you a premium? You know, it's not enough to be paid for it. How can you get more than your cost for to become? I think that those kinds of very simple questions force individuals and organizations to become, to use my phrase, strategically introspective to become more situationally aware. I believe that you can't decide where you want to go until you have a better sense of where you are and a better understanding of who you are. So strategic introspection, what kind of innovator are you, needs to raise questions like, what kind of customers do we want to have? I actually think these are simple, fundamental questions. And I'm a little surprised that more organizations don't spend more time focusing on them. I think the reason for that is they're trying to do more of what they're already doing and do better of what they're doing. I think you get the greatest return on investment when you revisit the fundamentals of your business and of who you are.